beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll pray. I'll pray. Your name. Your name. I'll pray. I'll pray. Your name. Your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of my praise. Of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of my praise. Of my praise. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, Jesus. You are so worthy. Hallelujah. You are high. You are lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same as the day to day and forever. You're the same as the day to day and forever.
think about with my son. Son got out of my dad almost back down on him. He wasn't a way maker. Hallelujah. I think about the house fire we had and all of those children in that house. But every single one is sitting in this sanctuary today because he's a way maker. Hallelujah. 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 He's always been a way maker. Hallelujah. You can think back to a time of your life when something 
be. Hallelujah. Glory. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Hallelujah. To be in the house of God. One more time. One more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Ain't nobody do you like me. My God. When you can get up and turn yourself around.
couldn't do that. God still, see, he started working on it. Working on it. He started working on it. Hallelujah. Sister Perry, you couldn't even walk this morning. Just creeping. But God made it away. But God made it away this morning. scripture to come forward. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. The altar is now open. If you can make your way to the front, we're coming before our God that is a way maker, a miracle worker, and a promise keeper. We're going to come to the throne of grace. We're going to pray this morning for salvation of souls. Suffolk Bishop Rader Johnson, First Lady Rhoda Johnson, Mother Elaine Stewart, Mother Georgia Bender, Mother James Ella Gerton, Mother Ernestine Garner, Sister Paula Lewis, Elder Herbert Jones, Minister Samuel Toomer, Sister Joyce Ann Thompson, Brian McCain, Sister Cornell Henderson, Brother Richard Loudon, Sister Lula Wagner, Marcus Bruce, Sister Barbara Spencer, Minister Julian Breckenridge, and the bereaved, Minister Tom Ella Baudre and the Baudre family, Elder James Breckenridge II and family, the Spencer family, and the Davidson Morrison family. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, to give you the glory and the honor, Lord, that you clearly deserve. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are excellent, Lord. You are mighty in power, Lord Jesus. Your works precede you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. We honor you, Lord, for saving us, Lord. You made the crooked path straight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling us, Lord, out of our darkness hour, Lord Jesus. You made us, Lord Jesus, come into your marvelous light, Lord. Continue, Lord, to bless your people, Lord. Help us, Lord, to go forth in all the world, Lord, and preach the gospel. Lord, to every creature, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are able, Lord, to extend your mercy to them, Lord, as you have done for us, Lord. Help those who are sick, Lord Jesus. Strengthen their bodies, Lord. Strengthen their minds, Lord. Don't allow, Lord, the spirit, Lord, of depression, Lord, the spirit of despair, Lord Jesus, to override, Lord, who we know, Lord Jesus, that we are, Lord. We are overcomers, Lord Jesus. We are your children, Lord, the people, the sheep of your people. Oh, my God. 
Mr. Buckner. If you would all, those that can stand, please stand, and we'll read the entire scriptures together. So again, it's Romans, the 8th chapter, the 35th through the 39th verses. Give you just a few more minutes uh, to find it. A few more seconds, really. All right. The 35th together. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than comforters through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Hallelujah. We're not going to get distracted. Hallelujah. We're going to stay focused today. Hallelujah. The enemy is trying to distract us. Hallelujah. Woo! But he's not going to work. It's not going to work.
room. Now you know we need to be praising God. We need to be worshiping God. Because we need this covering. We in our home, in our bedroom, in our kitchen, in our basement, wherever we are. And here comes Adele. Here comes Adele. I'm telling you, we need to be praising God. Because God is good. He's a keeper. He's our cover. He's the one that's protecting us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're not a driver, you leave church today and see don't you run into some complications. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I, but you know, God is just so good. I, I just have to say, just let it out, you know. Just because I, I, I got to praise God. I need to be praising God. We don't know what today going to bring. Giving the praise and worshiping. Building up the atmosphere for our pastor to come forward. Hallelujah. So when he get up, the atmosphere will be set. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is not all for just one person. This is just for us. Every, anybody in the house needs the Lord. Everybody in here needs the Lord. Hallelujah. Every, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall come That Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue is going to confess, confess that he is Lord. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. The blood that Jesus shed.
At this time, we'll have a musical selection by our choir, and the diggers and trustees, diggers, will make change at this time. And we want to keep on praising God. We don't want to get distracted. We want to. We don't want to get distracted today. We want to be, just praise God, worship Him, give Him the glory. He deserves it all. Hallelujah.
your sadness and all like that, and you can still move around. today. We pray that you will experience a spiritual blessing and that you will be able to say as you depart, I am glad I came to Greater Bethel Temple this morning. That's where we want to leave with you. We want you to be glad that you came here to worship with us today. And at this time, we'll have a ministry of giving. Announcement, yeah, announcement, and, and after that we'll have our ministry of giving. Praise the Lord, everyone. Glad to be here on today, and the Spirit of the Lord is, is free today. And Minister Perry, she's not playing, is she? She's not playing. Amen. She is serious about giving God his due. And we appreciate that about her. At this time, we're going to do a, a thank you card. And it says, in this troubled world, it's refreshing to find someone who still has the time to be kind. Someone who still has the faith to believe that the more that you give, the more you receive. Someone who's ready by thought, word, or deed to reach out a hand in the hour of need. Your kindness and caring play such a big part in lifting the spirit and touching the heart. The warmest of thank yous can't even begin to express what a wonderful blessing you've been. Thank you so very much. Words will never express my love and gratitude for my church family. For each, every one of you are simply amazing. You show what it really means to love. Thanks again, and that's love the Beaudre family. Amen. We're going to continue to lift them up. We'd like to let you know that the hospitality committee will meet right after morning service in the old choir stand. All hospitality workers, if you could please attend, and that is from First Lady Rhoda Johnson and Sister Pat Forey. Amen. 
Also on the calendar, you dig Teen Talk, and that is for tomorrow, June the 15th. The meeting will be here at Greater Bethel Temple beginning at 7 p.m. And if you have any questions about that, please contact Sister Pamela Johnson or Sister Jonica Collins. And we did verify that there will be Teen Talk on tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, there will be a Celebration of Life memorial service for Brother James H. Spencer. The service will be from 7 until 9 p.m. And from 7 to 8 will be time for a visitation with the family. And then the service will be from 8 until 9 p.m. Uh, the praise team will be singing and there will be special remarks and an opportunity for others to speak. Refreshments will be served to the family afterward. So if you can please come out. I believe they were saying on last night that uh, Brother Spencer was a part of this church for 50 years, over 50 years. So we want to show, amen. He was our brother. We want to show love to that family. Amen. We'd like to remind you also that on Friday, July 26th through Sunday morning, July the 28th, will be our Holy Ghost Revival. And it is with Evangelist Naomi Cecily. Amen. We're excited about that. She's been here before, and she's from Columbus, Ohio. A service will be on Friday night, and then Saturday at 12 noon, there will be a seminar. And I believe anyone that is interested in receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, we want you to be there, and also the ministers uh, on Saturday at 12 noon. And then on Sunday a.m., uh, Bishop Johnson will be speaking, and Evangelist Cecily will be directing our altar ministry, and be sure to bring someone or invite someone that wants to receive the Holy Ghost, because that's what it's about, a Holy Ghost revival. And also, uh, we have upcoming, very soon on our calendar next month, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World International Summer Convention. It will be in Cincinnati, Ohio, Saturday, August the 10th through Saturday, August the 17th. And the theme is, Now It Shall Spring Forth. We'll be under the direction of our new presiding bishop, Bishop Theodore L. Brooks, Sr. And we're looking forward to that. And also, there were a couple of changes. If you're used to going to the Holy Communion services, it will be on uh, Monday, August the 12th at 7.30 p.m. instead of on Thursday. And then the consecration services for the new bishops and et cetera will be on uh, August the 15th at 9 in the morning, and that is a Thursday. And if you have more questions, you can go to P-A-W-I-N-C, P-A-W-Inc.org slash convention. You can find everything that you need to know about that. And one other thing that we'd like to let you know is um, we do have anyone that wants to send a card of condolence uh, to uh, Evangelist Kathy Morrison or the family of Latanya Davidson. My sister, Sister Charlene Spalding, has the address, and we will post it on the bulletin board in the back hallway. But we have the mailing address if you'd like to send a card. So thank you so much. At this time, we have the uh, Ministry of Giving, Happy Time. And we have a selection by the choir. And after that, will be the preach word by Pastor uh, Bishop Johnson and uh, Minister uh, Elder uh, Briscoe is going to introduce our pastor today.
say praise the Lord, everyone. And truly, we thank the Lord for this another Sunday morning that allowed us to be in the house of the Lord one more time. He didn't have to do it, but we're so glad that he did. God is worthy to be praised. Let's give God a hand praise for this awesome choir. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's give God a hand praise for the service thus far. God is in this place, and I'm so glad that I'm in his presence. I count it an honor and a privilege for this opportunity that has been afforded to me to introduce and to present to some, none other than the pastor of Greater Bethel Temple, 834 South 3rd Street. And now all the ones that's listening on the internet, you in the right place right now, because this is a man of God that's gonna preach the word. And if there's ever been a time and a season that we need somebody that's gonna stand on the apostolic doctrine, it's right now. Let's give God a hand praise for our bishop, Bishop Rayner Johnson. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Isn't he wonderful? God bless you. Lord Jesus Christ, we're grateful right now for just another day, another opportunity to come into your house and worship you and give you the glory and the praise. You mean so much to us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful and we bless your name because you are good and your mercy is everlasting and your truth endure to all generations. We thank you for comforting the Baudry family, Lord, and comforting the Spencer family, Lord. We thank you for blessing Brother Sherman Phillips, oh God, who was rushed to the hospital, but you were there with him all the time. We thank you for being with that family. We thank you for being with the Spencer Foree family, Lord. We ask you right now that you would bless your people on today. Let your word have free course in the lives of your people. We thank you for all of our visitors. We give you praise and glory for all things. Bind the powers of darkness and the demons of hell. Beat back the forces of Satan right now. Make him take his hands off of God's people. Move in this city, Lord. The west side, Louisville. The destroyer, Lord, deal with him right now. In the name of Jesus, and we'll magnify and praise your holy name, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Be worthy. Praise. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We are happy for our guests that are here. Amen. And one is not a particular guest. She's at home. And that's evangelist, as we call her, Dee Dee Williams. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Come on, stand up, Sister Dee Dee. Come on, give the Lord a hand for her. God bless you. It's good to see you. Come back home to be with us, to check on us, and make sure I'm doing right. Can you say amen? We're so happy to have her, and also her son, uh, little Ricky. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're happy to have him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, we have uh, another guest here who uh, served in this church uh, for a period of time, who's now living in Indianapolis, and that's Brother Leon Gray. We want Brother Leon to stand. Y'all remember Brother Gray? God bless you. God bless you, Brother Gray. Happy to have you. And all, of course, the daughter and son-in-law of uh, Mother Fountain. Elder, District Elder, Harvey and his wife that are here with us. And uh, when I looked at her, uh, uh, I just thought about Mother Fountain. Praise the Lord. Amen. She looks just like her. I think she does anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and we're happy to have her. And we're gonna have District Elder um, Harvey come to have some words. We're happy that he's here with us, and so we wanna ask him all the way from Spring Grove, Virginia. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Come on, District Elder, please have some words. God bless you. We have to Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Lord. Truly, we're grateful to be here, and we do honor the shepherd of this house and the suffering bishop of Greater Johnson, uh, to his lovely wife, Rhoda Johnson, and to 
all that are in the house, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. Uh, the former lady at the house, we thank and praise God for you. Uh, I'm grateful to be in the house of God one more time. Yeah. I'm thankful for my wife, Vandis Harvey. And, uh, this year we'll be celebrating 45 years of marriage. <laughs> took her away from here and I promised her father that I would take good care of her and I, I hope I've done that and, uh, and uh, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. It brings great memories to me because I, I'm a son of this church. I got saved here at this church. And not this particular church, but it was the old church on Clay and Breckenridge. And, uh, I'm honored to be associated with each and every pastor that has been here except for the founding pastor, all the way back to Bishop Schultz, and, uh, Dr. Forey. And we just thank and praise God for each and every one. My mind is going blank. Bishop Stewart, Lady Stewart. I thank and praise God. We have some fond memories. I remember convention in Atlanta and we went and ate dinner with the stewards and, and I, they've always welcomed us and cherished us with love and, and I felt that same love when I met the pastor of this church, uh, Bishop Johnson. And they just welcomed us in and we, we're just grateful to be here and it's, uh, my favorite scripture is that well, the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed for his compassion fail if not. Uh, I cherish that scripture because it's because of his mercy that we're not gone. It's because of his mercy that we're not suffering like others. And I'm just grateful to be in the house. We just come out of our council, Virginia State Council, and uh, we retired our bishop, Bishop Clarence Moore. He was going into emeritus status. And we had a joint council with Virginia State Council and East Tennessee, West Virginia Council. We just had a wonderful time. A high time in the Lord. And I'm looking for the same high time here through the preach word of God. And truly we ask that you pray for us. We'll be returning home uh, Tuesday and we just Thank and praise God for each and every one of you. So many faces that I recognize and see from the old church and everything. I just thank and praise God for each and every one of you. You pray our strength in the Lord. God bless you. All right, God bless you, District Gilder. We also have Bishop Clifton Kilbert from Living Way Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. We want to have him come. Have a few words. Let's receive it by giving the Lord a hand for him. I want to let you know I'm crazy, but I ain't lost my mind. How about that? Huh? I, woo, no. I believe in heaven. I'm on fire. You know why? Because of the Holy Ghost. And we all should be on fire for God. Come on, somebody. Somebody may think them grasshopper can't move, but when the Holy Ghost get a home to you, oh, you gonna move. Somebody tell you there's some fire going on. How many of y'all gonna be sitting there? Uh-uh, you ain't gonna be sitting there. You gonna be getting up like, hey girl, did you hear what they said? That's some fire. So we ought to give God praise every chance we get. Because I'm telling you, somebody don't have hands and somebody don't have feet. Somebody can't run down the aisle and give God some praise. Hello, somebody. Woo! Glory. And you know what? I'm mad about Jesus. Because there is no name in the name of Jesus. And we ought to praise him every chance we get. Come on, we ought to not sit and just look around and tell he's on a vacation. God is still God, and he always will be God. I love him because he first loved me. And so you gotta praise God. Don't just sit there and look like, where am I here or am I not? Honey, you got to praise the God that you serve. When some of y'all went out to 
in the damn floor. Did you stand there? Mm -hmm. No, you didn't. Oh, you got your groove on. I know you did. And you ought to do the same thing for God. You ought to praise him when you don't feel like praying. Praise him when there's pain in your body. You ought to give him that praise. Magnify the name of Jesus.
Come on, give the Lord a hand. Are you saved? Did he save you? Hallelujah. Glory. Ah. Oh, my God. Ah. Rescued me. I was sinking. He was playing that song. Praise the Lord. Folks started coming to the street service yesterday. I want to thank the saints. We had about 50 people out there. And I had a great response. Mr. Cedric preached a very fine sermon. Excellent sermon. Preachers preach good, and they make other preachers want to preach. So Bishop Trump won't turn altar call into another sermon. It was hot out there, but we was too caught up in Jesus to... Praise the Lord. So the Lord blessed us. The next service is going to be um, at Bishop Trumbo's out on his lawn, August 3rd. And we're going to go out there and get after those souls. Can we say amen? amen. I wish. I wish. All right, we're going to get into the word. I'm not going to hold you long. We already run a little late, but uh, we're having a good time, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so having a good time. I'm going to call your attention to a very, very familiar passage of scripture found in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And verse number 10 through 13. Philippians 4, verse 10 through 13. I'm not going to be for you long. Amen. On this afternoon. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 10 through 13. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can be content as Christ strengthens me. That's what we're going to talk about. Maybe seated. I can be content as Christ strengthens me. Paul at this time was in prison. And we don't know how long at this time he was in prison. But he is speaking good things. He has a good outlook in spite of his situation. I can think of no worse place than to be in prison. I worked in a prison for 26 years and the prisons in that day were some of the most deplorable places you could ever be. And so the Bible tells us that in the 28th chapter of Acts, when he got to Rome, they put him in prison and put him in chains. He was constantly in chains. And they allowed different ones to come and visit him. Uh, Epaphroditus, uh, Timotheus, 
uh, Titus, different ones. And they would come to him and report to him the state, the status of the churches. Many of those churches that he established as an apostle. And so for him to have this attitude, even though that he was in prison, he had to learn how to be this way. It didn't come naturally. It's in our nature never to be satisfied. It's in our nature never to be content. Just look at the drivers that drive here in Louisville. Can we say amen? They seem to have no patience. They seem to always be in a hurry. You know, one thing I learned is that you can never go wrong taking your time. I guess that's why they say patience is a virtue. Can we say amen? But I remember my wife and my daughter went to St. Louis this past week for a few days. And uh, my wife was commenting on the way back that uh, as she got closer to Louisville, she saw the difference of the drivers in St. Louis. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, but here he was speaking to this church. This church was the only church that, out of all the churches that he uh, founded, was the only church that would send him help. Because you see, he had to pay to be in prison. The Bible says he was in his own hired house. So he had to pay rent on a place where he couldn't leave when he wanted to leave. Praise the Lord. And of course, he could not work. He was a carpenter by trade. He could not work uh, because he was bound in prison for the gospel's sake. But there were still expenses that the Roman government uh, required of him. And so it was the church of Philippi that he said that in verse number 15, he says, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, that is when he first came, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but ye only for even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity it's really amazing that when you walk with God it don't matter what your circumstances or conditions are he'll take care of you he will always take care of his own that's why we shouldn't fear we shouldn't be anxious or anything like that God's going to take care of the situation I remember my mother walking through the house singing that song, even though she was suffering uh, the abuses of my father and the things that he had done and continued to do and made such an impression upon me. And, and she used to always sing that song and I could never sing it like she sung it because, amen, some songs that you sing, you can identify with the spirit that motivated the songster to write the song. Amen. Just like the song that was done, I can't remember the name of the man off the top of my head, but he had a wife and a little baby that uh, died in a car accident. And of course, he was very devastated because that was the only family that he had. And the story goes that he sat down and the Lord began to deal with him and he began to write the words of the song, uh, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Lord, keep me from all wrong. See, he was hurting, but God was dealing with it. And that's what I love about Jesus, that you can be hurting at your lowest state, but he won't forget you. He'll come right there where you are. Amen. And pick you up and put a smile on your face and joy in your soul when naturally you have no reason to do that but that's an example of how God will take care of us. And praise, I didn't understand that when my mother used to sing that song, amen, be not dismayed. See, sometimes you gotta talk to yourself when you ain't got nobody else to talk to. I wish I was in the right church. And Annette used to walk through the house and I didn't know what was going on. Walking through the house singing, be not dismayed. She wasn't talking to anybody else. She was talking to herself. 
whatever be tied. God will what? God will what? I want you to know it don't matter what you're going through. Don't be dismayed. Why art thou cast down? Oh, my soul, why art thou disquieted in me? You got to talk to yourself sometime. Hope thou in God. He may not come when you want him, but he's always. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. He's always on time. And so Paul was going through these things, praise God. And, 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 and in reading uh, uh, his story, we know how he got to Philippi. He was in another city and he, had, he saw a vision and a man was in the vision and said, come to Macedonia and help us. And so the next day he got up with Silas and went to Philippi, praise God. You can read about it in the 16th chapter of Acts. And when he got to Philippi, they went to an area where they normally had prayer. They went in there to pray and, and began to teach the word. And they met a prominent woman of the city named Lydia, who was the seller of purple. Amen. That took note of Paul's preaching and was convicted and got baptized. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost. And this caused a, amen, praise God, the spreading of the word in the city of Philippi just by two men, Paul and Silas, praise God. But then there was a woman that was there that was uh, like a witch, a soothsayer, praise the Lord. And the Bible tells us that, amen, Paul and Silas cast the devil out of her. And this caused a lot of people to get angry and amen, and they took them and beat them and, and put them in prison and amen. That's where you get the story, praise God, that at midnight, Paul and Silas praised praised and thank God and the prisoners heard him. Can we say amen? You see, he learned some things. Praise God. He learned, amen, that whatever condition, whatever circumstance he found himself in, as long as Christ would strengthen him, he could be content and God would always come on through and see about him. Oh, y'all don't hear me on this afternoon. And so as they began to thank God and praise God at midnight, you know the story that God was moved on the throne. Amen. Because anytime we set our heart to give thanks unto God and to praise him, amen, in spite of our situation, amen, that gets God stirred up in the church of hallelujah. That gets God to move in. Praise God. I don't know about you. I don't want God sitting still on my situation. I want him to move. And like the songwriter said, when the Lord gets ready, when he moves, you got to move. The devil has got to move. Your burdens have got to move. Your sickness has got to move. When the Lord gets ready, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Anybody need God to move? Amen. Anybody need God in your situation? Just ask the Lord, Lord, give me strength so I'll be satisfied for what I'm going through. And he'll move for you. He'll shake your jail cell. He'll loose your chains. He'll heal your body. Because that's just what he does. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm trying to hurry up here. Come on and shout hallelujah. And praise God. And as, amen, the Lord loosed him. And the jailer, okay, praise God. The man, the jailer got afraid and went to kill himself. And Paul said, don't kill yourself. We're all here. Praise the Lord. I don't know how many other inmates escaped. I don't know how many of them uh, got out there. But amen, when God came in and shook up that jail cell and, and loosed the chains of uh, Paul and Silas, amen, that Roman soldier, amen, became convicted. And he came in and said, sir, amen, what do I got to do to be saved? Can the church a hallelujah? You see, you can influence when somebody else, amen, to come under conviction. That's why we got to witness and live holy, amen, and not be ashamed of what God has done for you and not be ashamed as to what you are, amen. You ought to be proud, praise God, not to be black, not to be white, but proud that you're saved and sanctified, proud that, amen, that what a change in your life has been wrought since Jesus has come into your heart, uh, into your heart, uh, and the church shut hallelujah. Don't be ashamed on the job. Uh, don't be ashamed in school. Uh, you are a child of God. Uh, he's living on the inside, working on the outside. Uh, oh, what a change uh, he's wrought in my life. Uh, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Uh, praise God. 
and wow, uh, amen, he got saved and that began the church, uh, amen, in the city of Philippi. Uh, but at this time, some uh, time had elapsed, some time had gone by. Uh, praise God, and now he is locked up in this prison. Uh, amen, and one of his, uh, amen, company brought word to him, uh, amen, concerning the state of the church in Philippi. Uh, this church was very special to him because uh, they're the only ones that looked out for him. Uh, amen. The Corinthian church was his own church, uh, but they didn't even look out for him. Uh, thank God for the church in Philippi. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, I want you to understand that the church uh, is God's blessing to you and to me. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Uh, I know we got problems, uh, but there's problems in every church. Uh, amen. But you don't let your problems run you away. Uh, amen. From the church that God has put you in. Uh, or y'all don't hear me. Uh, don't you know that the devil don't want you here? Uh, y'all don't hear me. Uh, he wants you out there in the streets roaming around. Uh, he wants you jumping from church to church. Uh, amen. But that's for me and my house. Uh, I was glad when they said unto me, uh, it's time for church service uh, at Greater Bethel Temple uh, and the church of uh, Hallelujah. Uh, Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, hey, but you always gonna have problems. Uh, amen. But you gotta remember, uh, there's a problem solver uh, in the house. Uh, there's a problem solver uh, in our midst. Uh, there's a healer in our midst. Uh, there's a burden bearer uh, in our midst. Uh, there's a heavy load carrier uh, in our midst. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, clap your hand and shout glory. Hallelujah. Uh, at the church of uh, Hallelujah. Uh, and you know, as I was meditating uh, on this sermon in my office, uh, I noticed that there's a correlation uh, between the book of Acts and Paul's epistles. Uh, you see, Dr. Luke was the one that wrote Acts, uh, which covers the first 30 years uh, of the New Testament church. Uh, and when you look at the epistles that Paul wrote, uh, Dr. Luke includes in the book of Acts uh, how those churches got started huh? in the church of hallelujah huh? the Corinthian church in 18 chapter of Acts huh? the Philippian church in the 16th chapter of Acts huh? the Ephesian church in the 19th chapter of Acts huh? in the church of hallelujah huh? and then when you look at the epistles huh? that the apostle Paul wrote huh? they were epistles concerning each of those churches huh? I wonder y'all hearing me huh? and when you read the epistles huh? and correlate to how the churches uh, got started in the book of Acts. Uh, you'll find that in the epistles, Paul uh, was establishing order in the church. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, oh yeah, God is a God of order. Uh, we just can't do whatever we want to do uh, in God's church. Uh, where is this order found? Uh, it's found in the word of God. Uh, you see, everything you do uh, is based on order. Uh, Everything uh, that occurs in the church uh, is based on order. Uh, and when Paul was writing the epistles, uh, he was writing to the church as he founded, uh, letting them know the order of God, uh, what's supposed to be going on uh, concerning deacons, uh, concerning how to treat one another. Uh, because God uh, is a God of order. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah, uh, even in the first chapter, of the book of Genesis when God created the heavens and the earth everything was done in order amen can the church hallelujah the sun and the moon couldn't come until God said let there be light I wonder y'all hear me the creatures from the waters couldn't come until God said let the earth come forth we learn in the book of Genesis that he is a God of order it's in our nature to be disorderly it's in our nature to want to do what you want to do some of our hold on to the old song back in the 70s it's your thing do what you want to do I can't tell you who to suck it to but when you in God's church it ain't your thing, it's his thing. Huh? Yeah. Huh? 
Uh, it ain't your thing. Uh, it ain't about you. Uh, uh, it's about Jesus uh, and Jesus only. Uh, uh, clap your hand and say, yeah. yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, he's a God uh, uh, of order. Uh, but I want you to think about this. Uh, everything around us is disorderly uh, because of sin. Uh, sin causes disorder. Uh, even in our country, uh, there's disorder in the White House. Uh, can the church say hallelujah? Uh, disorder uh, in the city of Louisville. Uh, disorder uh, in the government house. Uh, disorder uh, in the mayor's house. Uh, everywhere you turn, uh, there's nothing but disorder. Uh, and when God sin curse, uh, and he cursed man because of his sin, uh, he not only cursed Adam and Eve, uh, but he cursed the entire earth. Uh, so the entire earth is out of order. Uh, that's why weather conditions uh, and atmospheric conditions uh, prevail like they do. Uh, because they're out of order. Uh, how do I know that? Because uh, in the eighth chapter of Matthew, uh, the Bible tells me uh, that the disciples and Jesus uh, were in the ship. Uh, Y'all know the story. Uh, and the Bible tell me uh, that there arose a strong storm uh, where the winds were blowing uh, and the waves uh, were on uh, and the boat got filled up uh, amen with water uh, and the experienced seamen uh, all of the apostles uh, began to get nervous uh, and said we're going to die uh, I'm glad uh, somebody had a enough sense huh, to go down into the hinder part huh, and wake up Jesus. Uh, huh, come on and say, yeah. Huh, I don't know uh, huh, what's going on in your ship, huh, but you got to make sure huh, you wake up Jesus. Uh, huh, come on and say, yeah. Huh, how do you wake him up? Uh, huh, David said, in my distress, huh, I cried. Uh, huh, Sometimes you got to come to the house of God huh, and cry out uh, wake up Jesus uh, I need you to do something uh, wake up Jesus uh, my children are going to uh, wake up Jesus uh, I need a touch uh, wake up uh, wake up uh, say yeah say yeah so they woke him up uh, and the Bible tell me uh, that he got up uh, and saw everything out of order uh, and he rebuked uh, the winds and the waves uh, because they were out of order uh, how did he set order uh, he just spoke the word uh, and said peace be still uh, come on and see yeah uh, and everything was calm uh, and then the disciples uh, said to one another what kind of a man is this uh, that can talk to the wind uh, talk to the waves uh, and make them lay down uh, if he can make the storm lay down uh, he'll make it lay down for you uh, peace uh, in your home uh, peace uh, on your job uh, peace uh, among your family uh, say yeah See, yes, sir. Uh, I'm almost finished. Uh, but here in Philippians, uh, in verse number 10, uh, he said, But I rejoice uh, in the Lord greatly. Uh, how many of y'all can rejoice uh, in the Lord in spite uh, of your situation? Uh, you can only do it uh, as, as my God uh, strengthening me. Uh, that's what he was talking about uh, when he said, I can do all things. Uh, uh, through Christ that strengthens me. Uh, uh, what are those all things? Uh, uh, well, I'm in prison, uh, uh, but I still got a praise. Uh, uh, I'm locked up, uh, uh, but with my hands lifted up uh, uh, and my mouth filled with praise. Uh, uh, I can bless you, oh Lord, because uh, uh, I got a heart of thanksgiving. Uh, uh, I learned, uh, uh, in spite of my situation, uh, uh, I've learned, uh, 
In spite of how I feel, I've learned. In spite of what's going on, I know how to be full and still be content. I know how to be in need and still be content. I can be locked up and still be content. How can you do it, Paul? I had to learn it. Like Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Come on and say, yeah. If I take your yoke, what can I learn about you, Lord? The first thing you learn is can't nobody do you like Jesus? Can I get a witness? You know, we got a lot of saints that live on the west side of Louisville and the destroyer is destroying lives over there in Louisville. But he can't touch the saints of God. What makes the difference in Moses' day when the death angel went through Egypt? He couldn't do anything because they looked up and saw the blood. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Saints, don't worry. If you're on the west side, the death angel as he roamed the streets looks at your house and he sees the blood. If you've been down in Jesus' name, you under the blood. The blood that keeps you day by day. The blood wants away the destroyer. The blood that bind him the devil. The blood the blood uh, it will never uh, y'all don't hear me uh, it will never uh, lose its power uh, clap your hand and say yeah hallelujah and this is what he's talking about he says I have learned that whatever state I'm in to be content regardless of what my situation is how could you do it Paul is through Christ which strengtheneth me. The strength that comes from God enables you to endure things that you normally could not endure. The strength that comes from God, amen, gives you the power to get on up and keep on going, amen, when you should normally be able to keep on going. See, that's the difference that salvation makes in your life. God comes into your life. And he is there in every phase of your life. That's why David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Come on, clap your hands together, Lord, I pray. He's the strength of my life. He's what keeps me going. It's as Christ so when he says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me he was talking about his current situation that he was in that he learned some stuff from God that his rejoicing he was not going to allow his rejoicing his outlook be dictated by his situation did you hear what I said that's a trick of the enemy see the devil couldn't do nothing with Paul that's why he just had to have him killed and God said, that's all right. I've gotten out of him what I needed. He's done the job. He can go ahead and die. And he knew it was coming. Before, but he said in one place, I have fought a good fight. See, there was nobody to eulogize him at his death, so he eulogized himself before he died. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. See, you can preach your own funeral about how you live down here. And you can say some things before you die. Can we say amen? I remember when I in the hospital, Mother Fountain. She said, I'm trying to go. Praise the Lord. I said, Well, Mother, how you feeling? She said, Well, I'm weak, but 
Bishop, I ain't got nothing in my life I got to confess about. I'm ready to go. I said, well, Mother Fountain, we don't want you to go. She said, too bad. <laughs> See, it's natural for us to cling to life with everything we got. But when you know Jesus, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. To die is gain. This thing is real, isn't it? It's real, young people. It's real, y'all. I hope y'all hear me. Y'all looking at me. Y'all look so cute. It's real. Amen. Don't let folk fool you that this is just some formality. In some places, it's a formality. But in God's church, it's the real thing. It's the real thing. Well, the ministers are holy. The deacons are holy. The choir members are holy. The ushers are holy. The first lady is holy. And the pastor is holy. <laughs> See, holiness costs you something. Holiness ain't free, it costs you something. As the altar workers move in place. But do, are you willing to pay the cost? Heaven is cheap at any price. Even if it costs you your life, it's still a better bargain. And as good as the presence of God has today in our midst. Can you imagine how it's going to feel when we take off these sinful bodies and be taken on a body like his and be catapulted up there to meet Jesus? And be, can you imagine how that's going to feel? As good as it feels down here right now. And one epistle Paul talked about all the things he was going through. I didn't get to that part of the sermon. I probably would have shouted a little harder if I got that part of the sermon. We didn't get to that. But he talked about being cast down but not forsaken. Perplexed but not in despair. And he said, bearing in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And talked about the afflictions of his body. And then in the next chapter he says, if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, you can kill this body, but I got a house in heaven not made by hands. You can do whatever in this body. But I got something coming that's far better. Amen. With that body, I don't need no hair transplant. With that body, I don't need no lifts, tucks, and poop. Can we say amen? I don't need none of that. And you that don't know the Lord have not been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. You're not content with your life. You're not satisfied with how things are going on in your life. There is a God that can fill that void in your heart. And when he fills that void, you can learn some things of him. And you'll be able to triumph over a lot of things in your life as Christ strengthens you. Paul could have said, I can endure all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's why we preach Jesus, because you need him. You need him right now. This is a Jesus church. We don't preach money, because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and what, all these what? oldest boy called us up. Oh, my wife was talking to the oldest boy on the way to church. He drives Uber. And he was getting on somebody about paying their tithes. And his family that wasn't paying them. So he said, if you pay your tithes, God will bless you. So shortly thereafter, he had an Uber driver. He had an Uber, a man called for him to drive for him. It was the cost was $6. It was only for five minutes. And the man was drunk in the car. Now, he wasn't that drunk because he had enough sense to call Uber. He would say amen. And 
He wanted to give my son a tip, so he pulled out a lot of money and he was trying to fumble through the money. And all, he said, I ain't got time for this. Take this whole bundle. <laughs> so my son said, I got to see how much money he gave me. He pulled off to his side. The guy gave him an $85 tip for a $6 ride. <laughs> the ride was $6. The tip was $85. He said he hurry up, ran to the church, and paid his tithes again. <laughs> See, you ain't got to pay him. You don't want to. You're just going to miss out on things like that. Can we say amen? You're just going to miss out. You're going to miss out. See, when your hand is like this, can't nothing go into it. Is that right? And God is not going to peel your fingers back for you. You're just missing out. That's all. The Lord has such good things for us, I don't want to miss out on nothing. Salvation is the start for you. Come on. Somebody. Come on. Come on, young people. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, this is your time. This is your time. This is your time. Come on, let the Lord, Lord fill that void. That in contentment that you have about yourself and about your life. Jesus can feel it. He can feel it. Any of y'all satisfied? son found that out he was got all his living and left he's what we call he was big bank Hank until the money ran out can we say amen <laughs> then he realized in all those friends see the scripture says he that show himself friendly shall have many friends that don't mean what you think that means that's a negative connotation. Because if you examine the text, it's talking about a person that will 
appeal to anybody that he meets and being friendly to them is compromising. He will have many what? See, when you tell somebody the truth, you're not going to have as many friends. Can we say amen? I talked to the young lady at the street meeting yesterday. She said, I heard about you. I said, was it good? And she smiled. <laughs> she said, it was 95% good. I said, honey, consider the source with the other 5%, please. She said, I have. You all right, Bishop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brother Sherman is here. Come on, give the Lord a hand for Brother Sherman. Wait your hand, Brother Sherman. He's got that Ray Charles thing going on with those shades. He passed out at work and was unresponsive. And they didn't know what was going on. They called the ambulance, called his wife. Wife rushed up to the hospital. They wouldn't even let her see him immediately, but they sent the chaplain out. Usually that's bad news. Amen. But God is tripping her. Yes. And she called me and we prayed. And he woke up. Isn't God good? That was what, Thursday? That was Thursday? Was that Thursday? Was that Thursday? And he felt so good, he was going to drive the van today. I said, no, you ain't. <laughs> we don't want to tempt God. Can we say amen? <laughs> I said, you take a rest. And Elder Tumor stepped up and filled in the gap. We got some good brothers here, don't we? We got some good brothers. We got some good brothers. Praise the Lord. And he's here today. See, a normal person would have stayed home. But he can do all things through Christ that strengthens God, strengthen him. That's why he's here. Sister Henderson is hurting a lot, but God is strengthening her. I can do all things. I can press to the house of God. I can press. During the council, for three weeks, a week before the council, during the council, I was passing blood like crazy. I didn't know what was going on. It got so bad that I wouldn't eat. That's how I lost some of that weight because I was afraid to eat. And I asked Bishop Merritt, it was when the Sanders girl preached. Thursday, I don't mean to disrespect her by calling her a girl, that's, that's how we talk. I got, I got a little country in me too. So I said, we don't talk like that down here. I'm talking about further country. And the Lord said, have Bishop Merritt and Bishop Nelson pray for you. So. So when you bust in, Gabrielle, where she at? Uh, that's what we was doing. <laughs> Gabrielle came in there to do what she normally does. And they were praying for me. And the next day, everything stopped. Everything stopped. Everything stopped. That's But see, I just signed an insurance policy on myself. And the devil was saying, you're 55, you're going to die just like Dr. Foray. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But see, you didn't know I was going through that. I was walking around here, amen, enjoying my new suit that became too big, but I was still wearing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Christ strengthened me. Went to the doctor to have the test, and all the tests was negative. negative. Somebody said, won't they do it? Won't they do it? Yes, sir. But God was still with me. I was holding on. I was holding on. I could have came up and had everybody pray for me in the church, but I didn't do that. I said, Lord, I know you didn't send me down here to die. So the devil talks to the pastor too. 
He was like, Dr. Foree had great success. This is what the devil said. Dr. Foree had great success fast. And then he was gone. He said, the same thing going to happen to you. Amen. He's alive. I kept on going. Y'all had no idea. My, my, my wife, my daughter didn't even know my wife was the only one that knew. Praise the Lord. You see, I got a praying wife. My wife knows how to pray. There's something about sisters when they get together and pray. I don't know what it is, Sister Dee Dee, but there's something when y'all get down to business and pray. God gets to move. God gets to move. I don't know what it is. Even when, even when Sister Dee Dee was running the Christian women, they was down here, face down, proud. Jesus, I ain't figured it out yet. Why am I trying to figure it out? Because I want some of that. What y'all got? <laughs> I want some of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That's why. with the sisters because they got some kind of connection going on that some of us brothers don't really realize oh, really. Oh, really. Oh, really. I'm going to let y'all go don't mess with the sisters brother said don't mess with the sisters elder Smith. Well, they got something going on. You say amen. Oh, yeah. I ain't gonna mess with you, Sister Cherie. I nicknamed Sister Cherie the Queen. And there's something about when y'all get to talking to Jesus, something get to happen. That man get to acting right. He was talking crazy, but after you got there talking to Jesus, he got to talking right. So Frisco. Oh. Sometimes I'm gonna put it on the Frisco on the spot. Sometimes the Frisco one way, but when Sister Frisco walk in, she like he like. Deaconess is a praying woman. She been through some things. When you've been through some things and you start talking to God, waking him up. How can Sister Stewart stay in that house? Because she's talking to God while she's walking through that house. And God is strengthening her. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. They said, move out. She said, I can stay there. Jesus is here. Oh yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So saints, don't stop praying for your children. Don't stop praying for your husband. Keep on praying. Keep on calling on him. He's going to do something. After a while. God bless you. She has a testimony. All right, we'll give her a testimony. Here, give her this mic. We're going to let her testify, then we're going to dismiss here. Kirby. everyone. You know, I'm legally blind. They said, that's what they say. 
And you know, uh, I was, when I walked in here early this morning, it was a completely dark in here, you know, but I'm learning the church. I said, sometimes people want to help me. I said, listen, I'm trying to learn my way around, you know. I said, sometimes I said, I'm just feeling my way. I was over there, and right now, I am not praying. But tears started coming out of my eyes. I've been praising and worshiping ever since I, I am a worshiper. And I have a ministry of praise and worship. And then God said, these signs are follow them that believe. I, I'm telling you, I can see you.
Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Help me to stand. Yes. My, 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 my. Make the darkness light. Before thee, whatever is wrong, I'll make it right. All your battles, God said, I will fight. Before thee in the high places. High places. When thou walkest by the way, he said, I'll lead thee. In the sky, I need thee in the high places. This God I serve says the high places. It's high to you because you're looking up, but He's above the high places. We look up to our high. He's looking down on our high places. He said, "I'll bring him down. I'll bring him down. I'll bring him." Bye, bye, bye. Let's give them all another hand. Oh, Lord. Lord, have mercy. See, the Lord, the Lord is checking up on me. That's why he's, that's why he's walking through. He checks on the pastor to make sure he's doing his job. That's why some services are more heavily anointed than others. If I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, he exposed me. It ain't about me, it's about him. Let me say amen. Because I pray all the time, Lord, come in and refresh, refresh the saints. Refresh. Anybody here feel refreshed? That's just Jesus, that's all. All right, we're gonna close. We're gonna close. Take the Lord with you. Take the Lord with you today. God bless you. Memorial service for the Spencer family. I want you to come out, family hours from seven to eight. And the service from eight to nine. The family, they don't want some great big extravagant thing, so it's just gonna be a simple service according to their wishes, and then we will have refreshments at the end of the service. Can we say amen? amen? So let's keep that in mind. God bless you. Any other announcements? First, the, first, the, the, um, the hospitality committee will be meeting where? And the old choir stand. We need to get a sign that says the old choir stand. Praise the Lord. They don't talk about the new choir stand. It's the old choir stand. Yes? for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Yes. for your love. Let me say amen. Thank you for your love. God bless you. What's, what's his name? Antonio Andre Smith. 
<laughs> All right. Bless you. God bless you, Antonio. God bless you. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the church. Wonderful. Are there any other announcements before we close? All right. All right. All right. Let's raise our hands and say, Great peace have they and love thy law and nothing shall offend them. In Jesus' name, clap your hands and say amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, somebody.